Hello knitters, Barbara Benson here. I'm an independent knitwear designer who also likes to make videos here on my YouTube channel, Watch Barbara Knit. If you would like to know more about my knitwear designs, please check in the description below. And there you will find a link to my Ravelry designer page where you can browse through photos of all the patterns I've designed and maybe select one to knit up yourself. If you do decide to knit up one of your, my patterns, I would absolutely love to hear about it. You can chat with me in the comments below or you can check in the description below for a link to the Watch Barbara Knits Facebook group. It is a closed group, so we can share pictures and have a tiny bit of privacy as much as you can on the internet. And I'd love to see you there. Today, I have a little bit of a fun for you guys. I promised when I showed off all the cool things I got from TNNA that I would make a video of myself attempting to make use the Pearl and Loop Minute Weaver. It's a tiny, tiny little weaver thing. It's so cute. And I just said I would try to figure out how to do it. So this is not a how-to video as far as I'm an expert and here's how you should do it. This is me having never done this before trying to figure out how to do it. So I can't say that I am in any way an expert, but if you are interested in seeing um, someone muddle their way through, you might want to finish watching the video and maybe pick up a little bit of weaving yourself and spoiler alert, it worked. So here we go. The Pearl and Loop Minute Weaver. So apparently this is going to take me a minute. I'm going to show you these instructions and we have an M8 size, an MF16, and an extra fine 20. Let's see what I have here. One, I, you count the number of slots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, six. So I have a 16. Um, it looks like it says for the fine and the extra fine, we're supposed to use lace weight or embroidery thread. And for the medium, worsted or DK, it seems like there should be something in between here. So I'm using fingering weight yarn. This yarn is a uh, sprout from the fiber seed and the color is Florida Summer Sky. I think it's pretty pretty and we will see what we do. I'm going to attempt to follow the directions. Let's see. Very brief is overview of weaving techniques, which is precisely what I need. So the warp is vertical yarn and weft is horizontal yarn. And we want to orient it like, I have a little comb, we're gonna figure out what to do with it. it. Appears that it needs to be oriented. Oh, and it says F16 right there, I didn't even have to count in this manner, which is a little confusing because the words are this way, but you know what? I'll figure it out. Now, let's get out our instructions and opening it up. I'm at nine. Okay, so I didn't need to go that far. We went too far. So to set up the warp, form a loom with warp yarn to fit over first groove. We're gonna make a loop, leave a three to four inch tail. So let's do our normal, let's make a slip knot. Do, do, do. And it looks like according to the picture, I'm supposed to put the loop knot, slip knot right here. Then I'm gonna tighten it down. Did I just tie a knot instead of a slip knot because I'm a goober? It just doesn't want to tighten. There we go. It is now tightened down. Okay. Next, step two, bring the warp yarn down to the opposite slot. Now looking at the picture, it looks like it wants me to flip it this way. And I'm assuming I want to keep my tail out of the way. And I'm gonna bring this straight down like this. And then bring around the back of the next prong and up through the adjacent groove and back up to the top. Hmm. 
Wait a minute. Nope. I got it wrong. <laughs> so that didn't work. Um, let's try putting this loop back on here. Let's look at the picture again. That seems right. And then turn it around like this. But this is the tail. So, nope, that's not the tail. This is the tail. The tail... Should be in the back somehow. Hmm. I think this knot is supposed to be in the back, and the tail. That's not. The <laughs> Whoa! This is very fun. As you can see, weaving knot my forte. Okay, knot in the back tail in this direction and then I think I need to bring this up and over like this and there okay that appears to match the picture and then we need to apparently flip it back over in this direction tail goes over there and according to the picture I'm gonna put it around this little peg. There we go. Does it look like the picture? Doo -doo -doo. Yes, it looks like the picture. Repeat this process across the loom. And once the warp is through the final slot, bring it around the back and connect it with the beginning tail. Okay, so let's see. So then I'm gonna bring it back here and take it up and wrap it around and down and wrap it around and up and wrap it. I, I put my finger there to hold it. Wrap it around, pull it through, down, wrap it around, up, wrap it around. Nope, missed it. <laughs> missed it again. <laughs> down, wrap it around. So it looks like our goal is to have all of the warp, they said the warp was the vertical warp threads to be on the face, the front. So there we go. I got a little fuzzy. We'll figure, that'll be fine. Now, we repeated the process and then we're going to flip it over and tie these guys together is what it looks like. Okay, move it up so you guys can see what I'm doing. Tie a knot, I think. Oh, boink! <laughs> that didn't work particularly well. So I'm going to get him back up here. Uh, maybe, maybe I will, maybe I won't. Mm, there we go. So apparently don't tie that too tight or it's just going to boink right off. And I'm going to do another knot there. There we go. And I'm going to pull that through because that dangling down back there is probably going to get in my way. So, tied it. Let's look at our picture. New looks like every other. Yeah. Okay. So I believe I have officially warped my minute weaver. Woo! -hoo! Now I think I need to cut this. Do 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 do. Cut. Now. Now we need our weft yarn, which is the stuff that's going to go across. Weft yarn through hole in tapestry needle. Do do. There we go. And begin weaving by going under and over every other warp thread. Pull the yarn all the way through, but leave a three quarter inch, three to four inch tail. So, huh. 
Apparently, I need to know how much yarn I'm going to use. Let's see if it has any hints. Six and a half yards lace weight yarn or embroidery thread. Hmm. I don't know how I'm supposed to know if I have six or something yards. So what I'm going to do is... Um, hmm. I'm going to hit pause. Oh! <laughs> or knock it over. Give me a second, guys. Okay, guys. What I did is I went and got my handy-dandy low-tech yardstick, measured one yard, and then used that one yard to measure out six yards. So now I have my... You know what? Hey, focus. There we go. Much better. So now I have my yarn ready to go. It's an awful lot of yarn. This should be super fun. Now, here we go. As if nothing had happened. Okay, we're there, we're there, we're there. Thread, okay. Under and over every other warp thread. So it seems like it wants us to start with under. So we're gonna go under, over, 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 under, over. Woohoo! We're gonna pull this and pull it and pull it a little bit more. Do, 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 do. And there is pulling coming through. Do, 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 do. Ooh, and still pulling. Hmm. Let's see here. That's more than three to four inches. Mm, that's probably good. Now, and then it says, going back, go over where you went under and under where you went over. That makes a spectacular amount of sense. So we're gonna, since we can't, our last one was over, we're gonna go under, oh, oh, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. There we go. Now we're gonna pull, oops. Apparently I should have held on to the yarn. <laughs> we'll fix that in a moment. I'm going to pull this end and pulling and I'm feeling under my hand yarn barf oopsie oh lord there we go pulling 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 oh I don't think that's supposed to happen let's see here Weave at an angle to provide some slack in the weft yarn and prevent the pulling in of the sides that resemble an hourglass shape. So I'm going to guess that's what that means. Hmm. So let me get my needle that handily came out and maybe pull a bit of this out. There we go. Not doing the bad thing anymore. And then it says... Use mini comb your fingers, the tip of your tapestry needle, or a kitchen fork. <laughs> I love using untraditional things. And push the yarn down. So that's where the tiny mustache comb come in. And we're going to put him in the slots and push things down. Ugh, push, 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 push. I wonder if it's supposed to go over that wooden part. Let's see in the picture. Mm, looks like no. So, we don't want to push it down too far. There we go. Now that's all loopy like that. So maybe I should tug that a little bit more. There we go. And now I need my mustache comb again. Oh, there we go. Let's see what's next. At the end of each row, we suggest adding a teeny bit of slack to the yarn to prevent gradual tightening and pulling in at the sides. Good tip. Once you are done weaving. <laughs> Okie dokie, so it's do a couple rows and a miracle occurs and you have weaving. So it looks like I'm going to be going over and under for a while. Let's try this again. I am going to find the end of my yarn somewhere. There it is. Re 
thread it and this time I'm gonna make sure it stays there so I went started with I ended with over so I'm gonna start again with under and it said to go at an angle so angle 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 I'm going to pull it and make sure I have a hold of that and then I'm just gonna set it down so that I don't run the risk of doing that again Ooh, the long pull seems to work long pull long pull and yarn barf hmm I bet there's a good way to fix that long pull long pull oh, oh don't yarn barf thank you whoa no yarn barf and Oop. leave a little bit where's the mustache comb squish him down and time to go again. Since I ended with an over, I'm starting with an under. Oops. There we go. Oh, 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 so close, so close. Ha. Oh look, because I pulled on this, I got the Hourglass of Doom. So I need to work this back here, my guess. There, no more Hourglass of Doom. Any mustache comb. I'm pretty sure there's not supposed to be any space there. So I'm going to try to push it down harder. Oh, there. Does that look like weaving? Hope so. Nope, it's just staying. <laughs> There's the, oh, hourglass of doom. There we go. So obviously, as with lots of things in fiber arts, this is a repetitive thing that's gonna take a while. And I don't think you wanna watch me do this whole thing. So I will return in a moment. I wanted to show this to you guys. Um, I thought I was doing pretty good and I was really close to the top and I had way, way more yarn left and I realized maybe I was doing it too loosely and not squishing down enough. So I wanna show you. So I had gotten all the way up to there and now I can actually squish it down big time with my little comb, but you gotta kinda of do it a little bit at a time. So, whoa, look at that. So literally it was up to here and by getting in there and doing some more really serious squishing, I just, oh, <laughs> I just made it made so it's going to take way longer to finish. <laughs> okay, I think I'm almost done. Let's see if I can get one more row in. So under, over, under, over. Now you can see, since I'm right up against this wood, this makes it a little more challenging to do. I'm going to do it. Oh. Under. Under. Over. Under. Over. Under. Over. Da -da -da. So, and of course, I had to get one more little piece of yarn barf. Uh, if there are any weavers watching this, and 
frank, frankly laughing hysterically at me. If there's any advice you can give as far as how to avoid this, I'm all ears. Oh, what happened there? Oh, my little loopy guy came off. I hope that's not important because it's staying off. <laughs> so let's continue to pull. There we go. And I think I could probably get in one more row. Do you think? What do you think, guys? One more row. Over, under, over, under. Over, under. This is just like knitting. Just one more row, man. One more row. It, it, under, over, under, over, under, over. Mm, under over da, da, da. Do, do, do. and I'm going to declare that the end I don't know if I should be able to get another row in but I'm not so let's look at our handy dandy instructions once you are done weaving and let me tell you guys, you made a good choice to not watch me do that because it took a lot longer than one would think. Leave a three quarter inch of your weft yarn. So my estimation um, probably didn't do the best, but snip, we're done. And we find it easiest to go ahead and leave two warp tails into the piece while it is still on the loom. Hmm. Okay. So we need to weave these ends into the piece. Um, I'm gonna push it through to the back because I'm a knitter and that's what I do. And then I'm going to see what happens if I just catch. I have no idea the appropriate way to do this. I'm going to catch that and catch. I'm going to try to catch these weft threads, I believe the word is. And just run a few through. Um, I'm sure there's better ways to do this, but... <laughs> I don't actually know what it, okay so I'm not gonna be weaving in ends according to this doohickey you're supposed to weave in the ends first but I'm making a giant mess and I'll figure it out later okay be careful not to split any warp threads while doing this so um let's see what the picture says let me see if I can get it focused on that huh yeah it does look like you're supposed to weave it okay I'm gonna try again I'm gonna be a good finishing type person. Let's go to the back side and let's just try to catch a few of these threads. I'm going to say two is sufficient just to say that I did it. And pull those in. I wonder if it's visible from the front. And let's go to the back one that I already tried once and messed up. <laughs> oh, I changed the focus. Is it still focusing correctly? There we go. So we're going to just grab that one and that one and maybe this one over here. Nope. Oh, can you see that? There we go. I'm going to push it. Don't. I might have messed up warp and weft. Oh, that doesn't look good. Look what I did there. I should have went around here. I think I messed up, but c'est la vie. Okay. Turn the loom over and cut the connected warp yarn tails. <laughs> sounds like a bad plan but here we go 
and cut. They are no longer collected. I'm guessing that probably should have been longer, but oh well. It just said to cut it. Um, no, they got it really short too. Turn the loom back so the front is facing up. And it looks like we're supposed to turn it sideways. Beginning somewhere. <laughs> that's helpful. Somewhere. Beginning somewhere in the middle, slip one of the warp loops off a prong. Do the same on the opposite side. Be sure that the opposite loop is directly connected to the first loop removed. Before I do that, I'm going to read the next step. With the loom turned sideways, the top of one loop is the bottom of the opposite loop. Gently pull the bottom of the second opposite <laughs> loop. Uh, uh -huh. Okay. Let's pick one in the middle to remove. We're going to apparently remove this one. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh, it's kind of sticking right there. Uh, it, there, it, it, yeah. Got it. I think I got it. Okay. So that one's up. Now I need to make sure it said to make sure it's connected. So if I run down to here, this is the one that I need to remove. Nope, not you. No, 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 not you. This one. So we're going to take that. So I think what it's telling me to do is to pull this so that it oh oh you see that when i pull on this it moves that till it's snugged up see that looks kind of cool and then i follow this up and take this one off and pull it i'm supposed to have it sideways oh, oh, oh. and then that's going to pull that one down fancy and so then I would pop this one off and when I pull on this one it should move that other one okay I'm gonna pinch that to make sure it doesn't flip it down okay this is hard <laughs> there we go there we go. Oh, that looks so ugly. You don't want to look that ugly, do you? Okay, and then I need to, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and pull this. Oh, that worked a lot easier when I just pulled on that. Instead of completely removing it, just going down and pulling on the next one pops it right off. and then pull it down. That looks so much better than the other ones. And then pull him up, it pops off. And then you can see that one at the bottom's coming up just until, ah, sweet! It feels like I'm doing this thing. And then I gotta grab this guy. And oh, so now that end is off. So I'm going to hold it with my thumbs real good and probably do it wrong. So, there we go. And then pull that one. That looks pretty cool. Is that what I'm supposed to do? Uh, repeat until you reach the top and then begin the same way on the other half. So I appear to be doing it correctly. So, now the next one I think would be that one. And then go down here and grab this one. There he pulled. Pop him off. Grab this guy up here. Pull him off. Grab this guy down here. Oh, he popped off. And then I'm pulling him. 
and you can see he's sucking in at the top. Then I'm going to grab this one, pull him in. Do do do! Look, Mom, doing it. Uh oh. Uh. That one doesn't want to go. So I'm going to pull on him good. There we go. And this is why when it said be careful not to split the weft threads when you're weaving in ends. If I had split a weft thread, then this it wouldn't move up and down. Aha! There is method to their madness. And then it's popped off. It's off! So I'm going to pull this guy up. You can see down there at the bottom. He's coming in. And then... I have the original loop and I'm going to pull it down. Ah, there it is. Look. Oh, oh, I don't know. It's a tiny, tiny, tiny square. How cute. Okay. So there we go. Weaving tails along the side. I'm not going to let you guys watch me do that, but there, there we go. I have woven the tiny weavy guy. How cute is he? Um, I can see how this could be a lot of fun and my understanding is to like if to warp up like an actual loom takes like hours so I can also see how this would be a lot of time saving as opposed to actually doing an actual honest goodness loom but there are a lot of ends I need to weave in here that's not a plus <laughs> So that was me trying to use the pearl and loop. Where are the instructions? Do do do. Minute. I'm going to say it's the minute weaver because it's tiny because it took way longer than a minute. This is the pearl and loop minute weaver and it is possible to do it through using their instructions. Um, and I look forward to doing this again. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you liked it, please give it the thumbs up, click that like button. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload a new video, please subscribe to my channel and select notifications. Thank you so much.